Hello, everyone. So <clears throat> welcome to our uh, presentation. So uh, the agenda for today would be we will be talking about how recommendation systems are built in the online for delivery system, uh, <coughs> space. We are from Delivery Hero, so we have already some experience building uh, recommendation system there. We will talk about the DS workflow that we have, like uh, EDAs, building models, how do you evaluate your models, how do you A-B test it, and then we will briefly talk about the architecture. We, we will also share some uh, reference systems that we have, and then also there is a small section where we will talk about uh, delivery or recommendation data set. So quickly to start with, we have Raghav, who is a staff data scientist. He has a very long journey, decade-long journey for enterprise-level solutions. He has worked in various uh, machine learning, deep learning, computer vision, and very various recommendation system, uh, and worked with a uh, couple, like I think you can see Delivery Hero, Optum, Intel, and I think American Express. So uh, experience in a lot of companies. Uh, Raghav also has experience uh, in publishing like a lot of books, if, if you can see already. So he has multiple patents to his name in terms of in mixed reality, deep learning, uh, computer vision, healthcare, uh, and then also uh, he also reviewed a lot of papers at conferences. So he's a very well-established speaker. Uh, and quickly introducing myself, I'm a data science manager at Delivery Hero. I've been a data science professional for uh, for five years, but a total overall experience of 12 years in various embedded systems, NLP, machine learning, uh, and deep learning. So quickly jumping to uh, the topic, uh, recommendation system. So basically, when we talk about recommendation systems, there are a lot of challenges in the recommendation system uh, where we like to, are trying to solve this problem. Uh, and in delivery space, if you see uh, there are the challenges that we face is cold start, where we where how do you solve uh, for new users? How uh, what what we should recommend them? Uh, also, choice paradox is one one of the major challenge. If you see, you will see a lot of recommendations, a lot of uh, uh, restaurants being shown to you, but what do you choose is is also another challenge. Uh, that other challenge that recommendation system face is the user geodiversity. So basically, if you if you see there are, there are different countries and different uh, like locations uh, in the world where people have different preferences to order, and then you have to train your recommendation system in a way that they will serve to different user uh, geodiversity. Uh, and then if I talk about uh, location preferences, so let's say you are at office, you are at work, or you're at some other place. Uh, so there will be different uh, recommendation that you would want to show to your user, and it's not it doesn't have to be stale also. So you have, you also have to uh, adhere to the lunch time, or you can say maybe dinner time, or maybe you are, if you are on the in the weekend, you might have different food choice, right? So in a way, these are the challenges that recommendation system face. And then in brief, we will talk about uh, the the solutions for them uh, down the sides. But to start with, uh, I will just quickly give a brief overview of the workflow that that we generally have. So we start with an ADA where we explore the data. Uh, once we have explored the data, we have identified the features to build. We pass it over to the model where we build the models. We identify which model to use based on the data set, and then uh, move uh, move forward to the advanced models uh, depending on your uh, stage where you are. And once we have built the model, then move, we move to the evaluation stage where you evaluate the model in offline fashion uh, and also offline online fashion. And then once that is also uh, you are successful with your uh, uh, experiments, then you move to deploy. So we will cover these phases uh, in, in shortly. So I will quickly talk about EDA. So in if you see in uh, delivery space, you you find challenges like if you look at the data by by a particular uh, vendor is converted. So we, we look at uh, that's a dis distance, popularity, delivery fee. So if a user is uh, like, if you look at the data, if user we will generally see user try to order from a restaurant which is more closer to them, right? And also uh, like these are the patterns that in general we look at uh, in the uh, in, in in delivery space. Then there there is also a delivery fee pattern where you can see like more of the, most of the users would like to deliver from uh, get order from a restaurant which, which might uh, require which 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 will uh, give them low delivery fee right and then similarly you can also look at delivery time so th these are the features i think in general we try to look uh, when we do exploratory data analysis and once you have identified these features then you can move to the model building phase where uh, 
if you are like uh, you can start with very ba basic with heuristics pick model where your business rules uh, and then you just apply a domain knowledge or maybe for cold start use cases you can also apply the popularity based and then going more advanced where uh, like a lot of companies uh, are in the linear phase where, where they create a model based on implicit features right they try to use very like basic techniques like metric metric factorization uh, or uh, like uh, very basic machine learning problems and this is where most of the companies will try to uh, optimize and then if there are uh, more advanced companies or more advanced data set uh, then you then the companies try to move to embeddings and then there are models like bart and sas and then now if you see that there is a trend of using llm so then it's a more advanced way but uh, then this is these are different stages in, in the in the model building phase but you can also talk about like uh, various uh, ways to uh, uh, create your model. Like either like some models can be are more optimized for batch, or they can be more optimized. Like heuristic, uh, like deep learning models might be more uh, optimized to use for batch. But like heuristic or linear models can be used more for online recommendations. Similarly, like cold start model can be can use more uh, like for new users it can be more of an exploit paradigm. But for let's say there are more advanced users, they, you would try to give them more diverse recommendation where you can try explore paradigm and then if you have let's say a lot of data where you can uh, just uh, use collaborative techniques and then if you have a metadata then you can try to use method based techniques so there are a lot of ways uh, to do this part thing and for next phase i will transfer over to raghav where he will talk about it. yeah thank you vishal yeah so so far we have covered two key aspects of the overall data science life cycle where we have talked about uh, you know how we do the eda and how it impacts our, our feature generation step and then finally a few different types of models and and based on the level of maturity of an organization as well as the kind of features that we have we we go on iterating on the set of models now once we have the set of models the obvious next step is to define uh, some ways in, in in which we can evaluate our models now this is this is one place where recommendation systems differ quite uh, well in comparison to other machine learning or deep learning systems wherein you have uh, metrics like uh, you know f1 scores accuracy precision and recall but uh, because the the ranking or, or ordering nature of recommendation systems we require slightly different and, and more evolved set of uh, evaluation metrics and and these draw a lot of parallels from the information retrieval space so some of the most standard ones and, and widely used ones are are listed on the screen right now uh, quickly talking about mrr or mean reciprocal rank so this is basically trying to identify or evaluate the model in terms of how high the, the most relevant recommendations are placed so assume you are you are searching for a pizza vendor or a pizza restaurant and and the rank for that vendor is, is on the fifth position so mrr for that particular vendor would be one by five uh, as compared to if you have another model which is ranking the same vendor on on the first position itself so the mrr for that vendor would be one on one or that model would be one on one and since this is a normalized metric you will have a value between zero to one where one is is the, is the best possible evaluation score for a model right uh, but then uh, the the one one drawback with mrr is is basically it is trying to look at just one specific uh, best response in the overall ranking uh, while in, in in a typical scenario you will have more than one uh, correct choice to make from right so there could be multiple pizza vendors now how do you go and evaluate your model or set of models based on that is basically mean uh, average precision or map in this case instead of just looking at one specific uh, rank that which is most relevant in our case we, we basically assign a precision score for each rank and this uh, precision score is basically averaged over over the overall population set to get the final map score now models which typically rank the most relevant vendors on top n ranks are, are given a higher preference or, or would have a higher value and similar to mrr this is also a normalized metric which would have a value between zero to one one being the best possible score uh, but still there is there is one drawback with map or rather not a drawback but limitation is the fact that uh, you know as you go down the ranks actually the the relevance of that particular uh, vendor or or recommendation should go down and that is what we are trying to capture in in the ndcg metric which is called as normalized discounted cumulative gain which is basically a, a log normalized metric and and we keep on reducing the relevance of of each uh, 
recommendation as you go down the rank uh, and then compare it against a golden or or the the most uh, you know correct set of rankings for a, for a given query and and in that way we are able to determine uh, what is the relevance or or what is the quality of the recommendation uh, this this metric is also uh, in in a way more useful when you want to give different weightage to different kinds of uh, interactions for example you could give different weightages to clicks versus orders and, and things like that. So it is a more evolved metric and, and most uh, recommendation systems that are built nowadays take care of or, or are basically evaluated using NDCG. But we also may, uh, make use of MAP and MRR. All of these are, are also <clears throat> sorry, are, are basically leveraged with, with up to ranks K in order to understand how the models are performing say for first five ranks for first 10 ranks and, and so on depending on how much viewport that you have on your screen um, apart from this there are a few other metrics for example recall coverage diversity and novelty recall is obviously similar to what we have in in the overall machine learning thing but co coverage is basically trying to understand how much of the overall uh, data set that we have we are able to recommend uh, diversity is 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 a more nuanced metric where we are trying to understand uh, whether the model is able to diversify its choices uh, or recommendations that it is presenting, or it is just biasing itself on 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 you know one specific kind of feature, right? And and novelty also goes in the same direction. Now these are all evaluation criteria or evaluation metrics when we are we are building the model. But then how does it translate in terms of the business metric now because these models are usually user facing or, or impact what the user sees uh, there should be a one to one correspondence with some of the business metrics as well in the e-commerce space or, or in the in the online food delivery space typical uh, business metrics are for example cvr or or conversion rate which is basically total conversion by total number of unique sessions we are just trying to understand how good or bad or, or how many orders does this particular recommendation system uh, lead to similarly ctr could be uh, you know some for for some other component where we are more interested in or it could be a supplementary component which is helping us get the user to the final ordering page hence it is associated with a click through rate and when we are talking about a business obviously revenue per order also makes a lot of sense so organizations which are heading towards understanding profitability or or uh, value of a customer or or, or their corresponding value also uh, take into account metrics such as revenue per order and uh, when when we are building an overall pipeline to understand how good or bad our systems are we typically try and create a correspondence between these business metrics and the offline evaluation metrics i just uh, presented in the previous slide okay now once we have our metrics in place both business and and the model evaluation uh, metrics the next obvious step is how do you go ahead and evaluate the performance uh, one key thing to keep in mind is that recommendation systems are firstly rank ordering the suggestions that it, that they are generating which is one big difference as compared to other machine learning systems and the other fact is that these are very temporal in nature uh, when I say temporal, it's it's because uh, what you see on your food delivery apps or or on your e-commerce apps uh, at at the very current moment, the recommendations or your behavior would change on from one timestamp to the other. And and when we are evaluating such systems, we have to keep these things in mind. Uh, with those caveats in in our mind, uh, there are two key ways of of evaluating the performance of such models. One is offline testing. This is very similar to what we do with other machine learning systems, as in we we cut cut or, or typical time series systems. We have our uh, historical data on which we train our models, and then we leverage a, a cutout set or, or a validation set, which is outside the training data, to offline evaluate how the models are performing. Now, one key drawback of offline testing is the fact that the, the holdout or, or the validation set that you have is already biased with the existing uh, recommendation system, uh, how, however simple it may be. And hence, whatever model you are testing would, would, would get invariably penalized because of, of that inherent bias. Uh, but then there are still ways of, uh, you know, uh, improving things and, and trying to, uh, uh, you know, de-bias the offline evaluation data sets. And, and this is an active area of research. Uh, but then the gold standard in terms of uh, evaluating the performance of a recommendation system is obviously an A-B test. This is uh, similarly in, in the medical domain, this is called as RCT. 
so what we at we, what we essentially do is we we divide our overall population into two halves uh, on basically it has to be as random as possible where one where one half only looks at the existing system or the or the baseline system that is already running and the other half has has then the new uh, recommendation that system that we are trying to evaluate which is called typically called as the variant and we let it run for a uh, period of time and then compare our, our metrics over the complete period based on the criteria that we have decided earlier and and then we understand whether there was a lift in the business metrics or not and that helps us decide whether it should be a final go or not uh, setting up an online A-B test is, is very expensive, error prone, and, and it can cost a lot of dollars because if, if you have a model which is not performing as good as it should, it might tank your overall business metric. So uh, typically organizations keep a key, a close eye on each and every test that, that goes on. And yeah, that, that's, that's the model evaluation. There are other ways of doing online testing. For example, uh, you know, there, there are switchback testing uh, scenarios or, or you could even run an MAB kind of a, a, a setup, which is a multi arm bandit. Uh, but then, yeah, the, those are all different variations of the overall AB test paradigm. Um, now that we have our evaluation criteria, uh, the way of evaluating our model, how do we go ahead and basically set up the overall system? Now this diagram might look a bit convoluted, but this is uh, you know, a, a usual pipeline, which I can quickly give you a walkthrough of. So the, the left-hand side, if, if you're able to see the, my mouse pointer, is basically a web app or, or a uh, mobile phone app on iOS or Android. Uh, we, we try and collect data in terms of, uh, you know, uh, how the user is placing the order, which components he or she is interacting with, and basically try and collect all of that data into our data stores. Uh, as, as Vishal mentioned earlier, we have a, a dedicated uh, pipeline to do exploratory analysis and identify insights out of that and also create features. Once we are able to do that, we uh, create a set of standard transformations which help uh, you know populate our feature store. These feature stores are basically what are used in the training pipelines. Uh, this is the spot where we basically have our uh, models trained and the trained models are, are, based, are stored in the model registry. Once we have the model stored uh, in an online setting or, or a batch setting, you would expose them through an API, uh, which would again be controlled through a gateway, depending on what component or what service wants to call it. And as I mentioned, you would typically connect it with the A-B testing framework because obviously you don't want to uh, deploy something which is not uh, tested. Uh, you need a monitoring framework to understand uh, how much resources this particular model is taking up. And also, uh, you know, you, you need some other downstream systems, which, which could be for uh, logging purposes and, and things like that. So uh, in, in general, a very obvious flow, but then this is this is a battle tested setup, which which works in, in most uh, recommendation system scenarios. Um, now, quickly coming on to the fact that, you know, the, the title said building robust and scalable. What does that uh, robust and scalable mean in, in our setting? So since Delivery Hero is, 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 is a parent organization with, with a number of brands across across the globe. We are serving millions of customers uh, on, on a daily basis and our systems need to scale uh, to, to different geographies to, to all of these million users so that uh, you know they can order uh, food in, in just a few clicks. So our systems need to scale well and when we talk about robust, so recommendation systems are, are the key components or the key services that power our apps. And, and in that sense, our, our systems need to be resilient and robust to ensure that customers get uh, best in class performance. Now, how do we do that? It's, it's typically through a, through a two uh, phase setup, wherein uh, we have one setup which is handling online or we are calling it as online system. This is basically online recommendation based on your current context. It could be time of day or, or what have been your search queries. We, we try to recommend things based on that. And this is basically the, the you know, a, a more difficult system to set up because it requires very low latency and, and it is very highly contextual uh, and it is fragile. So if, if you have a sudden uh, burst of traffic, these systems could, could be tricky to scale up quickly. Uh, although they require very less storage, they are very high on compute because obviously you, you need to compute a lot of features on the fly and they take care of, uh, you know, they, they use a lot of contextual information as well. 
uh, the the backup plan in in most systems is is a batch or offline setup wherein we uh, take care or, or we leverage historical data say up to a few hours back train our models and keep them handy so in case a new user comes up we already know your preferences and and uh, you know uh, your likings and and we we try to create uh, you know recommendations already in place so in case the offline system fails or we do not have a, a you know a, a miss in the online system we fall back to the uh, rec uh, the batch system which can fulfill the the requirement uh, batch systems are also typically the way uh, most organizations start because uh, not in all settings you would uh, typically would have uh, contextual information available to you these are cheap and battle tested systems uh, they are very high on uh, storage because obviously you'll have to store uh, you know recommendations for the whole population uh, but they are very low on compute because you don't need uh, very high end systems to uh, you know be responsive in in near real time so this covers the robustness and scalability aspect of it but then um, you know all of this is is fancy and and good to do uh, but then how do you go ahead and explore some of this stuff on your so we'll we'll quickly talk about our our open source uh, data set so uh, earlier this year uh, we had uh, our paper uh, accepted at acm uh, rexis uh, so the, the the paper is titled uh, delivery hero recommendation data set uh, so folks who have already explored the recommendation space uh, would be well aware of data sets such as last fm amazon books and and movie lens being being the top most used one but then all of these data sets are are quite dated and focused on uh, say movie recommendations or or e-commerce but then uh, typically you wouldn't find data sets which are high in quality and, and large in size when it comes to fertility and uh, as as you can see on the screen uh, uh, we, we have this data set which which comprises of close to 4 million orders spread across three key cities uh, where we have uh, uh, you know enough number of orders uh, to uh, power the the latest set of recommendation system algorithms uh, and and these are uh, you know th this this particular data set is is uh, way more complex as compared to uh, earlier available data sets that that we have um, so uh, some key uh, facts about this data set are that as as i mentioned we are we are covering close to 4 million uh, orders and and roughly 1 million customers spread across three key cities uh, the last two columns are particularly interesting interesting basically because in the e-commerce uh, sorry in in the in the food delivery space you uh, we have a number of products which are available on a vendors menu or a restaurants menu but not all products are typically ordered or some of the products might might never uh, catch the attention of the uh, customer and hence the number of products ordered the last column in this table is is way lower so this 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 showcases how sparse the overall uh, ordering setup is and and how uh, efficient our algorithms have to be to understand patterns in, in this in such sparse uh, setup right so i was just trying to highlight some complexity in uh, you know in building recommendation systems in this space and also the fact that uh, we we, are, we have intentionally tried to cover three different cities which have very uh, different uh, ordering patterns as well as uh, different uh, uh, densities as well um quickly talking about uh, the the potential use cases from this data set as i was mentioning uh, you know products are are or, or food items are typically very diverse across different vendors and uh, there are different ways to normalize so for example one restaurant could be calling a specific burger as burger and somebody else could be calling it as as a you know a patty sandwich or something like that so how do you go ahead and normalize such things uh, are, are, are some of the key challenges in the NLP space. Uh, uh, somebody could be just listing down uh, one liter of Coca-Cola while other might be uh, saying it, it has 1000 ml. So, you know, you would have you would have to build up some unique pipelines to recognize similar products. Uh, also, since we are dealing with multiple countries, there could be different languages. Uh, so these are some of the NLP related problems and we have intentionally uh, left the data set as close to reality as possible so that you can explore. Uh, obviously, this this can also be leveraged to test out different recommendation system algorithms to understand what vendors or what products to recommend. 
and finally also uh, you know clustering techniques to basically uh, train or or understand patterns in in this data set this data set is freely available for anybody to uh, use download and and it is available on github so feel free to open up any issues if if you uh, want to send some feedback or or if you have any suggestions for us to improve um, with that uh, we are uh, you know at the end of the presentation um, and open to questions feel free to uh, add your questions thank you